Welcome back my friends. In today's video I want to show you three ways to dynamically create user interfaces for your Shiny app. You see, you often don't want to show the full user interface as a user enters into the app, but instead you want to show bits and pieces of your app as the user does something or clicks on something. And in today's video I'll show you how that works, so let's dive in. The first thing that I want to show you is the insert UI function. This helps you to, well, insert stuff into your user interface. And it can be a little bit weird to figure out the notation that you have to use inside. But once you figured out how to find the stuff you need to actually fill it correctly, it becomes kind of self-explanatory. Let me show you how that works. In Positron, we can start with an empty app skeleton that is pretty boring. If we render this, then we see that right now there isn't anything inside of our app, but let's fill it with some inputs. Let's stick in a radio buttons input in there for which we assign the ID as no. We label this radio buttons, do you like this? And as options, we use yes or no. And by default, there shouldn't be anything select that way. If we execute this now, we see that our app is filled with something now, but but of course, as we select stuff here, nothing really changes. And that's because the server function is empty, but now we can fill it with content to insert more user interface elements as the user selects either yes or no. To do so, let us add an observer to our server function. And we're going to bind this to the input yes, no, so that this observer is executed or the code inside of the observer is executed whenever the input changes. So now inside of the observer, we can say that, okay, Okay, if the input of the yes or no ID, this one here, if we've selected yes, then we can do one thing. And in the other case, we can do some other thing. And the thing that we want to do now is to insert user interface elements. And the function that does exactly that is rightfully called insert UI. In this function, we have to figure out where to place the user interface that we're going to specify. And we do that via a selector. You see this selector takes some CSS specific to find out where to place things. And here this hashtag means put it there where you find a container that uses the ID yes, no. And as it turns out, the radio buttons have this exact ID. And we can easily check this if we wanted to by going into our browser and then using the inspect window and then drilling down into the code here and finding the container that contains it all. And you see here that, yeah, there is yes, no. We can actually make this a little bit larger here so that you can see it better. Here's the ID of the radio buttons container. So that's why using this as a selector is perfectly fine. And what we can do here now is to tell this insert UI function to place more content at the end of this container or after the end of this container. And to do so, we specify inside of the where argument, the after end string. If you look into the documentation of this function, you can see here that there are just a few options to choose for this where argument. And now what we need to do is to fill the UI argument with UI elements elements that we want to place after the yes no ID container. So what we're going to do is to specify the UI as a slider input and there just like usual we define an ID, we define a label that is supposed to be displayed with the input and then we specify input specific arguments like minimum, maximum and value. And now if we re-execute this we first have to close our previous app. Now if we re-execute this and choose yes then we see that now stuff is executed and we see that we have a slider input here now. Of course, when we choose no, nothing really happens because we haven't specified anything in the else part of our if condition inside of our observer. So let's change that. Basically, we can take the exact same code as before and say, okay, we want to place everything at the exact same spot as before, but the UI is supposed to be different. Here, let's just use a text input with the ID text input that has the label why not. So if someone selects no, there will be a text input that asks, well, why didn't you like this. So now re-executing this, we see that, okay, with yes, there comes this. And now if I reload this with no comes our input and we could technically throw in text in here. But now watch what happens. If I select yes, then we see that there is a slider input inserted into our UI. And if I click on no, then we see the exact same thing happening over and over again. That's usually not what we want. So let's try to fix this. What we have to do inside of our observer is detect if there already was something inserted 
inserted and if so then take it out before inserting something new and the easiest way to figure out if an input was already inserted is to check whether an input of the id slider or of the id text input was already inserted but that's what we can do we can check whether input slider or input text input is true but of course these things here are not actually trues and falses instead they are values that correspond to the inputs that the user makes here so to check if they are available we have to wrap these inputs in our code into a function that checks okay is this really there i don't care what it is as long as it is null or something else weird and for that shiny has a specific function namely the is truthy function and if you wrap your inputs into this function then you will have checked whether the inputs or one of the inputs is already available so that's why you can then execute code based on that knowledge and the thing that we want to do here is to use the remove ui function in this function we have to once again specify a selector of what we want to exclude and here we once again have to check into the code that is thrown in here so if we check yes let me make this larger here for you if we look into our source code then we see that my output is thrown into a container of the class form group shiny input container so that's why we're going to just take this also notice that this is a div container here and then inside of our remove ui function we're going to specify the selector where we say that we have a div container of the specified class and to denote classes we have to use dots in front of the class names and since these were multiple classes here we have to use a dot in front of that too if all of this sounds fishy for you don't worry you can check out my web development for our video series where you find a whole bunch of information on how to read this kind of html css stuff and how to deal with that so make sure to check that out in case you want to learn more but now one thing we have to worry about is that this thing here will also be a specification for the input or rather for the container of our radio buttons here you see by definition they are an input container and they will also be placed in this exact kind of thing so what we want to do here is to throw in a tiny bit of more css to say always grab the last of this specific type that we have specified here and remove that so with that whenever we are certain that an input exists we will remove it and then we're just going to insert a new element so let's try this so here we select yes now we select no and we can see that whenever we switch back and forth still there's always only one widget present pretty neat isn't it perfect so now we have learned a nice technique to do a whole bunch of stuff this technique of inserting and removing parts of the user interface can be used anywhere. In our case, we only ever want to change one thing in a very specific situation or in a very specific spot of the app. And in these kinds of situations, we can make our lives a little bit easier if we use a different approach. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So in our user interface, we could just say, you know what, let's also throw in a UI output in here and let's specify an ID. Here, let's just go with something really interesting. Let's call it dynamic UI. And now what we have to do inside of our server function is to basically use this exact code, but don't use it in an observer. Instead, let's use it in a render UI function. Remember, for every output, there is a corresponding render function. And here for the UI output, there's the render UI function so inside of this we can just stick in the code from before and then we don't need all of this stuff here and instead what we still have to do is to make sure that this render ui is actually assigned to the output so this is why we have to say output dollar sign and then use the id from before and of course what we also have to do here now is to get rid of the insert ui because we only need to specify the ui elements now because this insert ui thing is something that the render ui function will do for us now so we only need to specify the outputs here, or rather the inputs in this case so now if we execute this we see that okay right now it is throwing an arrow because it is waiting for yes or no to be selected but the moment i do that we see that everything works just like we want and in order to avoid this kind of error here we can just make sure that this render ui thing is bound to the input yes no so it waits until it is available let's check if this actually is 
true, you see here now that bind event makes sure that there isn't an error. And now if I select anything in the radio buttons here, we see that we get our nice little output here. Fantastic. So with that, we have learned yet another powerful tool to create user interfaces for our Shiny apps. And before I show you one more cool trick that will elevate your user interface game, let me mention that Shiny brings you into the world of web development. And this is a huge topic, which I cannot possibly cover everything off. But thankfully, I have friends at Athletics who have thought about how to teach you everything there is to know about Shiny and their Shiny courses help you to learn well everything there is to it. They cover everything from the basics to using frameworks like Golem and even inserting custom HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So if you're looking for a full package deal that teaches you all of the things you need to know about Shiny, then this course is definitely for you. And I know the creator Vela who has put in a whole bunch of effort into this course. So I'm sure that you will get lots of value out of this. And if you use my promo code RAP10, then you can get 10% off all of their data science courses, including the Shiny courses. So make sure to check out the link in the description. And now let's get back to the video. All right. So I've promised you a third thing that you can use to create a dynamic user interface experience. And of course, I don't want to lie. So let me show you the third thing, which allows you to update any input of your user interface dynamically. This is really neat if you want to say update an input value on some other event like a button click. And for this particular example, I've brought you another little shiny app here that throws a nothing but an action button and a slider input where the server function currently is still empty. And as you can see here, we have a slider and we have a button that does nothing, but it is already called move slider to seven. So let's try to make sure that when someone clicks this button, then this slider input jumps to seven. Let's try this. So inside of our server function, let us throw in an observer using the observe function. And in here, we of course want to bind this to our button click. So we're going to specify input and then we're going to use the ID of the action button, which is just called button. So now whatever we throw into this observer will be executed as this button is clicked. And now we want to stick in the code here that updates the slider input. And if we type in update, we see that there are a whole bunch of update functions for all kinds of elements. And if you scroll all the way down, you see here that there's also an update slider input. So this is how you know that if you want to update a slider input, use the update slider input function. And in there, you have to now specify the input ID. And the ID of that is slider. And the value that you want to update to is seven in this case. One word of warning before I show you that this actually works. The first argument of this update function or for any update function, in fact, is the session argument. This is a technical thing. So make sure that you put an input ID in here. Otherwise, it will not work because you really want to stick this kind of thing into an ID and not into a session argument. You can ignore this session thing for now. But I'm telling you here because I've been wondering about this kind of thing for some time until I realized, oh, I didn't put the ID into the actual ID argument. Instead, I put it into session. So of course, it makes sense that stuff doesn't work. So now if we re-execute this and restart the app, we see that, okay, if I now click this button, it is immediately immediately jumping to seven. We could actually also update other parts here. We could also update the label and say something like this has been moved. So let's try this. And now as I click this, you see that it jumps to seven and the title of the slider input also moved or it, it didn't actually move, it changed. That's what I meant to say. Fantastic. With that, we have learned three approaches to create user interfaces dynamically. And with that, we have once more extended our Shiny toolkit. I hope this video serves you well. Let me know in the comments if this helped you. And I hope that you will stick around for more content like this. Make sure to subscribe to see more Shiny content. And also don't forget about the courses by Athletics. And now with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.